everyone, I just wanted to make this video, uh, I'm going to redo it, redo the one that I made last night. Um, after class today, I decided I would add and subtract a few things from it. Um, so, I just want to remind everybody that this lab was all about um, investigating, uh, of course, everybody, I mean, we know what the density of water is exactly. Um, but we're trying to uh, use this lab to give you practice designing and developing an experiment uh, as well as using experimental data to figure out uh, things such as accuracy and uh, precision. Um, and then using that information you get from the lab uh, to do some analysis of the lab itself. Um, so uh, you should have taken a variety of mass and volume measurements today. Um, we are working on this in class. Well, I believe most people uh, didn't have a problem with it, um, I just wanted to uh, repeat it just to make sure everybody is on the same page. Uh, so you should have gotten a number of mass and volume measurements, so I'm going to make up uh, some right now. Um, 4.01. Okay, so you should have gotten a number of that mass and volume measurements. Um, you can calculate the density of each uh, set of experiments by taking the mass divided by the volume. Uh, you can do this by hand or you can do it using an Excel function. Uh, so to do it in Excel, you would type in equals uh, the square that contains the mass, and, uh, the backslash or the forward slash key. Uh, then the key that you're dividing it by. So that'll calculate your density automatically. Um, to copy the formula to a number of other cells, um, you can move your mouse pointer to where there's a black cross, which is on the bottom right of the cell, and click and drag downwards. And that copies your cell, um, or copies your equation to the cells below it using the appropriately numbered uh, Excel cells. Uh, so to find the average density of all your measurements, you would type in equal average and then a parentheses. You then want to highlight all of your density measurements that you obtained. And then Excel will give you uh, an average measurement. I can also use Excel to help you find the standard deviation. That one you can do by typing equal STDEV in a parenthesis. Then you highlight all of uh, your density measurements. Then that will give you a standard deviation. Uh, the last thing we need to find is the coefficient of uh, variance. So we'll abbreviate that right here. Uh, and the coefficient of variance was equal to uh, the standard deviation divided by the average, and this is a method we're going to use to determine if something is precise or not. Um, so to do that, you can do that one by hand and just take your standard deviation and divide it by your average, or you can use Excel to do that as well. Uh, so that to do that in Excel, you'd type equals uh, your standard the box with your standard deviation in it, then divided by the box with your average in it. Uh, Oops, and then you times it by 100 uh, for 100 uh, percent. So here we had an average of 1.01, 1 .01. Uh, assuming um, if you need to change the number of decimal points in a number, uh, there should be an option in Excel that has either the forward or back uh, increase the number of decimal points. It looks kind of like these two boxes up here. Um, so let's assume that we had three, three sig figs in all of our measurements. Uh, so we'd want three sig figs in all of our answers. Um, so we had a measurement of or average of 1.01 .01 grams per milliliter. With a standard deviation of plus or minus 0 0.02. Uh, 
uh, with the coefficient of variance of 2.45. Um, if you can do this, this is probably the most important part of what I'm trying to teach you today. Um, the graphing method is something that's very commonly used uh, in research and in science, so I think it's a very good tool to have. Um, so if you want to use the graph to help you figure out the density instead of just finding the average, uh, you want your volume uh, in the first column and your mass in the second column. Uh, you would want to insert a marked scatter chart. Those typically work the best. Um, well, one thing uh, you want to do when making graphs, usually there's an option for a quick chart layout in Excel. Uh, I like choosing one that has both the title heading plus the access titles. Um, so you can call this one density of water. Okay, on our y-axis, whoops. On our y-axis, we have our mass in grams. So always say what it is plus uh, the units. On our x-axis, we have the volume in milliliters. We only have one set of data, so we really don't need uh, the key or the legend. So now we have a very simple graph. Um, in order to use this graph to figure, use the graph slope method to figure out the density, you'd want to, uh, I always just right click on one of your sets of data and it'll give you an option to add a trend line. And we usually use a linear trend line and I think it's best to always set the intercept equal to zero and display the equation on the chart and display the R squared. Um, so now, what does this tell us? Uh, so we can get an average using, uh, we'll say this is the average that we obtain using the graph slope method. So the slope of our best fit line, um, which is here, is 1.0035. That will be the density obtained using the graph slope method. Um, now the R squared function uh, which is right here. That's a measure of how well your data fits the best fit line. Um, so if it's above, if it's around 0.95 or above, usually we consider the data uh, to be pretty precise. Uh, so ours on this example was 0.99878 or 0.99878. Uh, because that's above 0.95, we consider it to be uh, relatively uh, precise. Um, so that's some of the key information I wanted to get across to you today. Um, what we are going over class, I think a lot of people were confused by this, was how to use a best fit line to interpolate uh, literature values for data. So in the handout I gave you, uh, which you can see here, um, I gave you a bunch of literature values in the lab uh, for the density of water. Uh, so if we plot a few of these on a graph, uh, so we have 15.6 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, 21, and 26.7. Uh, to change Celsius to Kelvin, uh, you take your temperature in degrees Celsius and you add 273.15. And that changes our uh, temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. Um, and if you type in the literature values for the density that correspond to those temperatures, uh, we got 0 0.99907 grams per milliliter, 0 0.9982 grams per milliliter, 0 0.99802, and 0 0.99669. Um, so if you make a plot of Kelvin versus density, uh, very similar to what we did above. Oops, so we'll add so density versus temperature. And one of the reasons we always use Kelvin uh, is because the when you use Celsius, you can have negative values for Celsius, and that really uh, throws off your best fit line if you use 
um, Celsius. So Kelvin is always better to use uh, because it is an absolute uh, value and you're always going to be zero, zero and up. So typically graphing works much better when you use uh, Kelvin as opposed to Celsius. So we, here we have temperature in Kelvin. So if you add a trend line to this graph, so you right click on a piece of data and add trend line, uh, here we'll just display the equation. Um, and uh, you can also plot the temperature on the y-axis and the density on the x-axis, and that is fine too. Uh, but if you do plot the density on the y-axis like I have here, um, I would right-click uh, on your trend line and format the trend label. Change it to a number with about seven decimal places. Uh, so if you only use two decimal places, uh, you get some inaccurate data. So now we have a best fit line here for the literature values for the density of water. Uh, so let's say in the lab you got a density of 25.2 uh, degrees Celsius. So if you convert that to Kelvin, which is 273.15, so your literature value for the temperature in class was 298.35 Kelvin. Um, so now if you put your literature or your experimental value for temperature into this equation, uh, since temperature is on the x-axis, you would put this value in uh, for x in this, be in this best fit line and then just solve for the y. Whatever you answer you get when you solve for y, that is going to be your literature value for the density of water. Um, right, so we can use... Excel to calculate that for you, or you can just use a calculator. Uh, so that would be your, um, and I just also would want to say that your density versus temperature chart should look exactly the same as this, and you should have the exact same best fit line. Um, 000251 uh, plus 1.061235. And then I made a mistake, so I'll let it fix for me. Uh, so the, dent, the literature value for density, uh, we'll use, oops, we'll use 5, let's see fix here. Uh, so the literature value for the density at 25.2 uh, degrees Celsius should be about 0.997 grams per milliliter. And if you want to double check that, that does fall in between 21 and 26.7, uh, so that so that makes sense. Uh, so um, let's say we want to calculate the percent error now. Um, so the the formula for the percent error we discussed in class was the literature or the, was the experimental value minus the literature value divided by the literature value times a hundred. Uh, so here we have two different literature values. Uh, so we have the error that we found using the average. Uh, so we're going to find the error using, um, sorry, um, let me rephrase that. We're going to find the error uh, if we use the value that we obtained with the average, and we're going to find the error if we use the value that we obtained with the graph slope method. Uh, so to find the error that we obtained using our, our average value, uh, so that's equal to the average value minus, or the experimental value minus the literature value divided by the literature value, then times 100. Uh, so we can do the same thing with their graph slope method, except this time we'll use uh, the density ob obtained from our graph slope method instead. Uh, so if we take that minus the literature value, uh, oops, then divide that by the literature value, and then times it by 100. Sorry. So according to this fake data that I just made up, my percent error using the graph slope method was slightly lower. So I had a 0.647% error as opposed to a 1.481% error using the graph slope method. Um, 
All right, and this is, these are some of the techniques that I want you to learn as we go through the semester. Um, they'll be helpful for you as we do labs and start interpreting data. Um, so here we found the percent error uh, as we found the density using two different methods. Uh, we have the standard deviation, uh, or sorry, we had the coefficient of variance plus the R squared. Um, again, if the coefficient of variance is 5% or under, usually we can consider the experiment to be pretty precise. Uh, if the R square is 0.95 or above, usually we can consider that pretty, pretty precise. Um, then we use some literature values uh, for the density and temperature uh, to make the best fit line. Sorry, my dog's barking at me. Um, we made a best fit line, then we used our experimental temperature uh, to figure out the literature value um, that we should get at that temperature and use that value to calculate percent error. Uh, so I hope this helps. Uh, we're going to have time to go over it in class tomorrow. Um, so if you have questions, make sure you ask me, bring your questions to class, ask your classmates. Uh, we'll, you know, I'm here to help you guys. I want you to learn this material. And it's really important that we get some of these really basic stuff down now. And I know it's kind of boring and it doesn't seem like chemistry, but it'll be good for us to know how to do this stuff. All right, I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.